Hello, my name is Peter Kraus from MyCN. I want to give you first steps in using MicroWizard. Here is part 3. Start with an empty project. To start with an empty project, that means we don't use any assistance, we don't load something, we just start from the scratch. We just go to File, Start Options, and Empty Project. So suddenly the project open windows appears. Actually, what I said already before in the other webcasts is actually the dashboard of the MicroWizard. And it makes a suggestion for the name of the circuit which was created just and we can give that a name. Actually we have to discuss a little bit about what we're gonna create. I want to make a very very simple cavity that has two irises and a certain cavity between these irises. So actually we call this circuit here uh, main so then we will see what happens. So, so you give the circuit a name and we just close the project option windows. So, we just start, if you look at the left side, here you have some red LEDs, I can say to that. Uh, that means there's something to enter. So, actually, because we started with an empty project, there is no frequency setting, no default setting, no variables, nothing. So, first of all, we have to create a frequency range. We dou double click on the frequencies knot and you can see the dashboard or the project options window comes up and there was no setting. So we use uh, in this case a very simple KU band cavity so we create K KU band uh, frequency range. Double click on that and that is we have a KU band with 12.4 gigahertz up to 18 gigahertz with 101 steps we just increase the steps to 500. So you can here see the start frequency is already set, the stop frequency is set and we just entered the 500 steps for this frequency range. And here you can see the uh, delta of the d uh, steps. You can see here the red LED turned to green, that means that's okay here. So the next red LED you can see in the default settings just close again the project options window, open the default settings knot and you can see here two other red LEDs. First is the cutoff frequency and the other one is the symmetry. So first we go to the cutoff settings. So we double click on the cutoff frequency and it shows us a warning we can just close that uh, because it will set for all used elements in the project these settings so and there's a warning because if you change them at once that could be some problems later on if you have a lot of elements maybe you choose a too high a cutoff frequency that is too high so that warning comes always up so but we close that so now the cutoff editor turns up so and because we are working in the KU band uh, so we will say um, use 300 gigahertz it's more than 10 or 15 times of the operating frequency the maximum of operating frequency that was 18 gigahertz so so we use 400 300 400 gigahertz so for the connection uh, again I explained again this uh, the connection cutoff frequency means that this is the cutoff frequency that controls the empty waveguide between neighbor elements. So, because we're going to create a cavity, that means it's quite long distance between the irises, so we don't need so much connection cutoff frequency. So, we just say 20%, which is actually already enough. So, the second part here we don't have a look at it at the moment so it's not important for this and we just say okay and again you can see here 
the LED for the cutoff frequency is turned to green, that means it's okay. It's like a traffic light, it says. Now you can go with that. But still we have a red LED in the symmetry setting. So we open the knot and we can see there's nothing set. So we just double click on the symmetry and the symmetry editor comes up. So we just want to create a very simple cavity a rectangular cavity so with an H plane iris like we did in the webcast with the assistant um, so you can see already the settings it sets the XZ plane uh, for electric wall the YZ plane is a magnetic wall and the plane XY is not important for this kind of structure so here is planarity set already to H plane and we don't have to take care about the radial symmetry because we don't use a circular waveguide so we say OK. Now everything is turned green so actually now we can start creating a very simple project. So now for that we go to the libraries. So we see here on the top you can see the basic elements that are the port. This is the empty waveguide that connects neighbor elements. This is a short actually the shorten the circuit and this is, is called rotation waveguide but we don't need that here but what we need is a port because we create a uh, cavity so we need actually two ports we place one here and the other one here okay we have to turn it a little bit because the you see the blue port here this is the port of the port element so then we want to use irises. We said a very simple iris that is actually a rectangular iris in a rectangular housing. This is the e element, it's called IR underline R1R. Just click on that and we place it here. And we place another one here. So the circuit is not finished yet. We cannot connect those elements to each other because I said before in the short introduction that we always have to use an empty waveguide between neighbor elements. So we go here. This is the empty waveguide. We place one here. We place one here. And we place another one here. Actually the empty waveguide uh, the symbol is a rectangular waveguide, but if in case you want to create a circular waveguide structure, it will look the same. It only represents an empty waveguide, so it, it stands for a, a circular waveguide, coaxial waveguide, and so on. It's only the symbol looks like a rectangular waveguide. So now we have to connect these elements. So we go here. You can see the symbol up here. This is actually the connector. So we go here. Click on the blue port and go here and the click so you can connect like this but in this case we can it ma we can make it much easier we just connect automatically we just click this because it looks for the neighbor blue ports and will connect everything at once so you save a little bit of work so now everything is connected but the still the structure is not finished because we don't set any geometries of these elements. For that, we have to think a little bit before we do something. First of all is, do we want to use directly direct uh, geometry values? That means we go into the element editor after double click. So here you can see the IRR1R1, R1, the first element. Uh, the system or the micro wizard already gives a name for that because all these names have to be unique in the circuit. So you can see here R, uh, IR underline R1R1, R1, and if you look at that, is IR underline R1R2. They have to be unique, otherwise, we got a problem uh, in the kernel. 
So we leave the names as they are, so it means the first iris and the second iris, but we don't have any values for the port geometries. You can see here A1 and B1 don't have any values. So we go here, click on the values here, on the properties, and you say zero millimeter. Actually the default settings here in are in millimeters. So now we can enter certain values. First we can say make a uh, dimension for A1. A1 is actually the width of the iris, but to, if you need help for that, you just go and press F1. Then the help turns up and gives you the information about this element that is existing. Uh, the help exists for all of the elements. So here you can see all the properties, A1, width of the waveguide port at port 1, and so on. You can see that here. But uh, I know these properties, so I don't use the help at the moment. Um, I can enter, for example, 15.8 for the width, and I can enter 7.9 for the height of the iris. But actually, I rather like to use uh, variables for that. So we actually uh, go back to zero and enter a variable. So we call this variable A1 because it's the outer waveguide dimension of this uh, rectangular iris. So I give a name A1. So now the system doesn't recognize A1 doesn't know anything about it so it says oh please you have to add a variable and uh, we do it now so we enter the value 15.8 and it's a uh, real variable you can see here the choice of the variables is real optimization equation out and tune variable because we don't want to change later on uh, this variable we leave it as a real variable so we say okay and you can see here, see here on the left that the variable is created and added to the variable list. So we can do it the entire through the entire structure like that, but I prefer the way using the project options windows with the variables tab. And I create a new variable. It's called uh, the next one. It's the height of the iris. It's called B1. And uh, it is a real value again. You can see here the you have the selection, the combo box here. So and we call the value. It's a real variable, and we say 7.9. Uh, and can here you have some options uh, for the editing of the variables. First, you can enter a command here. Say this is width of iris housing. Iris housing. And we say here, height of iris housing. Actually, you don't have to do that, but sometimes it's uh, could be quite interesting to know what that f the value for this variable was. Here you have some editing options for the variables. I just show you, we don't need them at the moment, but to show what you can do with that in case, for example, uh, play around a little bit to say it's 9.999 so we want to round the variable say to two digits so we say round and you can do you see it makes eight so it you can play and you don't have to use the uh, you can use a bunch of variables select them and just uh, you can range them you can scale them and you can round them okay I go back and say 7.9 we don't want to use eight so go back to this place here. So um, because we have an iris this is not enough we need something else it's actually because we use an h-plane structure we need another variable for the width of the iris itself. So we create a new variable we call it a2 because it's a width again and we make it a little bit uh, smaller than the A1 variable so we say 13. So now you can see here we have now three variables we want to use later but 
still there's some variable missing. Now we have for one variable the width, the height and the iris width. Actually we do like that the irises th that we used already two irises so we leave them the same so they will have the same width, height and so on so we don't need more uh, variables for that but we need still one variable for the cavity length so actually I create another one and call it L for length and we just play around say 8 millimeters so here you can see if you look at those two variables you can see B1 is actually the half of A1 for that we actually could use uh, equation so we change b1 to an equation variable so and you see it says uh, not a numerical number but we're gonna use an equation for that and we use a1 so now you can see uh, now it would be the same value like uh, a1 but we divide it by 2 so it's again it's 7.9 so now you can see the use of an equation as well. So actually this is fine for me for the beginning and we just close this. So now we go back to the element editor and we see here B1. We don't have a value at that moment for that so we're gonna use one of those variables. So I just double clicked on this field and this selection of variables comes up. We click double click it and now you have the outer waveguide dimensions for this iris. Now we go to geometries. Geometries contains the inner dimensions of the iris. So A2, as we said before, is the width of the iris itself. So we double click and say we use the variable A2. Double click here and this variable is used in this iris. B2 it's necessary as well. So here we say the same like the outer waveguide dimension, say double click on B1. The next we have is set L. Set L is actually the depth of the iris itself. So and there we uh, spend only one value, one millimeter. Here you see A0 and B0. These are displacement variables or properties and we're not going to use them at the moment so we leave them as they are. If you now on the left side again you see here cut I. Cut I is the cutoff frequency that is used inside of the simulation of the iris itself because the iris is actually a connection of two rectangular step discontinuities. So we, sp we just jump from a larger waveguide to a smaller, then we connect a very little lengths on that small port, then we use exactly the same discontin step discontinuity and connect them on the other side. So for this connection between those two step discontinuities, we need a certain setting for the cutoff frequency. We're not going to use all modes for computation in this because um, it's not uh, uh, useful so we use 70% of that. Field plot we don't use that at the moment 3D FEM is not necessary as well so and material settings we leave as they are. So the next thing is actually is the cutoff computation setting. So um, we're gonna use 500 gigahertz that we said in the default settings before and connection we don't need here at the moment so we leave it like it is. So symmetry we t take the same as we used before and say it's an electrical wall in the XZ plane, a magnetic wall in the YZ plane and we use planarity H plane and for the radial symmetry we don't need anything. So we say OK, apply OK. So this one has already all, no sorry that was H, uh, yes, we, for 
the second iOS we have everything. Actually, um, we use the same. Uh, we can either enter all these values here again, or uh, I show you something else. So I delete this element. You say why? You're just gonna copy that one. I say Control C, or you go up here, Edit, Copy, and say Control V, or go up here and say Paste. So you can see here. So we have actually a copy of the same iris. So and we connect them automatically again. We go up here. So now if you double click on that, you see I got the same name because it looks automatically for the name, but you can enter a different name here and you can see the settings are the same um, like before. So there is still something missing because here this is the empty waveguide between those irises and there is no setting at all at the moment. So we need actually a length of the iris. So we go here, double click on that and say L, double click on L So and we have a length between those two irises and we say cutoff frequency here, we say 500 and now we need the connection 20% and that's okay. Say okay or apply and then okay. So everything, you can see a difference between those two empty waveguide sections. Actually this is a little help for the users if they want to see if the length of the empty waveguide is zero or not or something is set there because if this is a little bit gray in the background of the symbol that means there's no settings at all. Here you can see it's clear that means this has been already set but we don't need any length here but this can be zero because we just directly connect the port at the end so we don't need anything there. So the next what we do is we save the project we go to a certain settings, so see we go to to Mycian, to Mycian, where is it? There, uh, project, your project, and we call it uh, empty project. Project, well, project, and we create it. And now uh, we want to run the project. And for that we go up here and you can see those two buttons with these green triangles. The left one is always for simulating project wide. So that means run project, optimize project, tune project and so on. The right one is for the current circuit. That means the first circuit that has the uh, focus will be simulated when you press one of those buttons. But at the moment, because we only have one circuit, uh, it's not important which one you use. You can choose either this one or this one. But we're going to use the run project uh, item with clicking on that or press F9. We just simulate now. So you can see the simulation is done and now you can see the result. Um, because we have so in a, such a nice little cavity, uh, I gonna show you another little feature which is nice to see in this for this project. So this is called interactive tune. For that we go up here, tools, and we go to this interactive tune. This is actually an inbuilt feature. And you can see this little dialog comes up and it shows all three variables we have. Actually, there is one missing. missing. Ah, yes, yeah, B1. B1 is missing because this is an equation and equations can't be used in the interactive tuning. Only real optimized variables because B1 is dependent on A1 so we can't uh, tune this uh, with that. It's not possible. To start that we have 
to go down to this button, start tuning, actually the micro wizard does following. It starts the engine, the solver in the background, and it is waiting for events. So it means for changing the variables. So first we just start, um, move the dialog a little bit down, that you can see the result, and we just say start tuning. First of all, it just resimulates everything, and then you have you can go with these sliders and do something. Actually, the only interesting thing is maybe L1 to see something. We go here, click on that, and we even can use a scroll or the scroll wheel on the mouse, and you can see what happens. You can s uh, interactive tune the entire little cavity. Or you can even the iris width slow down and go here. You can see you can tune online. And actually with all these mode matching elements we have it makes sense to do it because it's very, very fast simulation, so you really can see the result very, very quick. Yes, um, that's it at the moment. I'm just close the stop tuning again. Close. So actually you had a first impression about creating a project from the scratch. There are so many other little tools that you can see. I'm going to show you a little thing I forgot nearly is how many modes are used, for example. If I press the right mouse button here, you can go to view list of modes and it shows you the modes that are used for connecting those neighbor irises. You can see the modes. These modes are the result of the symmetry and the cutoff frequency of connection. And yeah. Okay, that's it for the first Thanks a lot and see you or hear you in the next webcast. Bye.